Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Thursday, October 18th, 2018. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about a breakthrough deal signed by Canelo with DAZN. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I don't say this lightly. Boxing is an extremely dangerous sport, right? Many of the best talkers in the sport, when I was younger, guys with great senses of humor, guys who were excellent in giving interviews, guys who could pub a fight and do it with the best of them, right? They no longer are interviewed. Some fighters, Wilfred Benitez, for example, great champions, have just quietly vanished. And then you hear stories about injuries that he suffered in the ring. Right? Other guys, you see them and the people around them are deferential, but when the guy talks, his speech is slurred. Much more slurred than it was when the guy was in his prime. Right? The sport of boxing is dangerous. We use terms like punch drunk. The NFL is worried about CTE. You can only imagine how big that risk is in boxing. Right? You have other guys who look great, sound great, but then their behavior just falls off a ledge. Jermaine Taylor, people forget that he was a guy who fans loved. He was a fan favorite. He was the person who you wanted your kids to know about and trying to portray boxing as a friendly sport with great people, right? What I want folks to do here is to just Google what Jermaine Taylor has been up to. You're gonna be surprised, at least I was. So, I'm all for fighters getting as much money as they can up front, right? I'm all for fighters making a mint while they're in the limelight, while they're operating at championship level, right? I want the fighters to get paid. I have much more empathy, much more sympathy for the fighters than I do the promoters who aren't getting their heads knocked in, right? Or the boxing managers, right? The fighter has one career, his. A promoter might have several fighters under contract. A TV outlet might have several fighters under contract. The manager might have several fighters under contract. But when the fighter's career dies, that fighter doesn't have other options in many cases. So I applaud Canelo, right? He's a fighter who, to me, has done it the right way. He's fought the big names, right? He's fought both Floyd Mayweather and Gennady Golovkin. He's also fought many other guys. He's also been a headliner for a long time, right? He's not on the undercard, he's the lead guy. He's the guy you tune in the telecast to see. He's the guy you want interviewed, right? I was once in Vegas, Canelo entered the MGM Grand, folks, he might as well have been Frank Sinatra or Elvis Presley in Vegas. <laughs> the guy draws the crowd, the women went wild. Everyone wanted a photo of Canelo, right? It was like having the President of the United States walk through the casino lobby. So, given the fact that Canelo has fought the tough fights, he's beaten many tough fighters, given the fact that Canelo is proven box office, I applaud Canelo and I applaud his entire team Right? Golden Boy. 
Oscar De La Hoya, the people behind the scenes in arranging this deal with the zone. Let me also say too, as subscribers here online know, I'm a subscriber to the zone. I love the service. I think the service is a godsend, whether you're in boxing or MMA, they have both, right? I saw Anthony Joshua's last fight on the zone. The zone offers compelling value. Right, compelling value, it is a great service. Make no mistake about it. So through that prism, I want people to consider these remarks. Now I do believe, especially when you're trying to assess odds, that it is important to know what the public is thinking, right? If you're going to try to figure out whether a fighter is overrated or underrated, it's very important to know how the fighter's rated by the public. So, this morning, and again it's Thursday, October the 18th, 2018. This morning, if you go to BoxRec.com, big time site in the industry, B-O-X-R-E-C.com, it's so big that the guys they rate as number one often show up on the site wearing box rack shirts, right? It's a big honor. It's a huge honor to be rated number one in your weight class by this website. So they have a list of the top pound for pound fighters in the sport. Right? This is the pound for pound list. This is how they see it. I understand part of it is mathematical. Part of it, I would assume, is editorial. Okay, fine. So, they have 24 guys. I'm not kidding. <laughs> More than four hands worth of guys. Right? Ranked ahead of Naoya Inoue, the man they call Monster, one of the biggest punchers in the sport, pound for pound. Really? You know you're an outsider when you're looking at the list and you're just saying, gee, how, how is this possible? Have I, have I just not been paying attention to the sport? Well, they have 12 guys, 12. Again, more than the fingers on your hands. They have 12 guys. <laughs> Folks, <laughs> I'm not even trying to, <laughs> I'm not even trying to laugh here, but the list is that laughable to me. They have 12 guys ranked ahead of <laughs> They have 12 guys ranked ahead of Mikey Garcia. Uh, what sport is this? What, <laughs> what exactly has Mikey done <laughs> to have a dozen guys ranked ahead of him in the sport? Right? I mean, I, you know, Mikey's looked awfully impressive to me of late. He's been picking up titles and stuff like that. And somehow 12 guys, 12 guys are ranked ahead of him. Now, importantly, for purposes of this conversation on Canelo, they have 25 guys, 25 guys ranked ahead of super middleweight champion Gilberto Ramirez. 25 guys. Now, it must be through this prism. By the way, for the record, they have Terrence Crawford ranked number one. They have Canelo ranked number two. Right? It must be through this public perception that Canelo got this deal. Right? I don't know how he lives up to it. Because understand, there is no way on God's green earth that Saul Alvarez, who is now in Gilberto Ramirez's division, 
beats Gilberto Ramirez. Folks, that's not a close fight. You've been watching Saul Alvarez against super welters and middleweights. He's in a real tough part of town now. He's in a loaded 168 pound weight class. Don't fool yourselves too. Hey, I'd love to see a third fight between him and Golovkin, who by the way, they have ranked third on the list. I'd, I'd love to see a fight between him and Golovkin, a third fight. But I don't think Canelo can make 160 again. I really don't. Clanbuterol, the substance in Canelo's tainted meat, right? We'll go with his story, right? Clanbuterol is something that's supposed to help you lose weight, right? It's supposed to be a weight loser, not a weight gainer. Now, the guy is busted with clanbuterol before fighting Golovkin in the rematch, right? The guy already fought above 160. He fought Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. at 164, right? Now he's jumping up to 168, Right, folks, I think that's his new neighborhood. I don't see Canelo ever going back down to 160. As I've said here online, if a guy in his late 20s tries to lose eight pounds to be competitive in a loaded middleweight division, right, you need to run to the casino to bet against him. Understand. Canelo is a guy who used to take parts of rounds off. Now, that's okay if you're Bernard Hopkins and you're in your 40s, right? We'll, we'll look the other way. You know, you're a senior citizen. You're George Foreman. You're back in boxing, right? You're, you're in your 40s. We'll say, okay, you know, all right. If I thought Vladimir Klitschko, if he returned to boxing, was taking a minute of a round off. I'd say, all right. You know, Vlad. Vlad's what? 40 years old now? When you see a guy in his 20s taking parts of rounds off, right? Look at his fight against Alfredo Angulo. You really do have to ask yourself, gee, what's going on here? This guy has major stamina issues. Now, I know he didn't for the rematch of the Golovkin fight. But let's face it, the first time he fought Golovkin, he took parts of rounds off. So you're talking about a guy who, how do I put this diplomatically, isn't a superstar athlete. He could be a superstar boxer, but not be a superstar athlete, right? A superstar athlete is someone like, let's say, Roy Jones, right? Manny Pacquiao. Guys who, you know, move around the ring, you notice the legs, you just get the feeling that if the guy was in a decathlon, he'd do well. Now, I'm just talking for myself. I know this is not the view in the public, all right? Okay, fine. Fine. But to me, Canelo doesn't really strike me as a superstar athlete. He strikes me as a superstar boxer, not an athlete, right? So now he's moving into the part of town which physically bigger men, right? Now I'm just here to say, forget the size for a moment. Just forget the size. Gilberto Ramirez, and again, he has a share of the title at 168. He's had that share for a while. He's unbeaten. Understand, he's not only bigger than Canelo. He's the better athlete. This guy is an athlete. He has the better legs than Canelo. Right? Canelo's going to find himself in. Canelo's listed at Something like 5'9". I think he's a little bit shorter than that. I don't know how he could grow. 
between his official weigh-in for the Floyd Mayweather fight and now, right? I believe in that fight, they measured him at something like 5'8", or something like that, right? Okay, they say he's 5'9". We'll, we'll follow the PR, and let's separate PR from facts. Understand, there are guys at 160 who are legitimately six feet plus, excuse me, 168, who are legitimately six feet plus. Callum Smith, right, Gilberto Ramirez, so, to me, as someone who has money right now on Rocky Fielding at 8 to 1, <laughs> crazy, 8 to 1, right, against Canelo, what I'd like to know is who exactly at 168 pounds does the zone think? That Canelo can beat. Folks, I, I take George Groves over him. I take James DeGale over him. I'd certainly take Gilberto Ramirez over him. Right? I'm assuming for a multi fight deal, especially at these prices, right? Some reports have Canelo clearing more than $30 million a fight. Right? And I understand. With this format, you know, the direct-to-you app format, there's more money for everyone. Okay, great. I understand that. Right? The Zone isn't spending money on, you know, HBO-level programming or Showtime programming. You're not seeing dramas and comedies and stuff like that. Right? They're not paying for movie rights to show you Titanic. Their focus is boxing and MMA, right? Okay, great. So I understand the pie is bigger for superstars at the zone. I get it, right? But what exactly is Canelo's future at 168 pounds? Let's play out some scenarios, right? As I've said, Rocky Fielding wins the title at 168 pounds off some great body shots on Tyrone Zyge in Germany, right? Understand, Fielding's only lost once, and that's to Callum Smith. Understand the mindset, too. If you look at that Tyrone Zyge fight, Fielding probably has, apart from his corner, Maybe five fans in the crowd. He takes the crowd out of the fight. Takes the crowd out of the fight on foreign soil. As I make this video, Fielding has a better than 50% KO ratio. Right? Now, I don't care what the line is. Right? I do when I'm betting. But I'll just put it to you this way. Just looking at the fight. That's going to be a hell of a tough fight for any middleweight. Right? Any middleweight. Fielding can hurt you. Canelo's going to want to get inside. Guess what, folks? Fielding's going to want to get inside. I know. He's an 8-1 to underdog. So let's go through some scenarios. Let's say the roof caves in. Canelo gains weight, is up at a bigger weight class, finds out that he's too small for the weight class, right? He's not cat quick like Mike Tyson. He's not a Bob and Weaver like Joe Fraser. In other words, he's a smaller guy who doesn't really have the tools, in my opinion, to be able to make that an advantage of his. Right? Canelo's a puncher. That's his signature. You could be one of the sport's top pound-for-pound -pound punchers, and I believe he is. 
But if you gain enough weight, even that advantage falls apart. Rocky Fielding's been hit by Callum Smith, folks. He's been hit by hard-hitting super middleweights. Right? What happens if Canelo hits Rocky Fielding and Fielding thinks to himself, well, Callum Smith hit me harder than that. What happens if Canelo hits George Groves and George Groves says to himself the same thing? Well, Callum Smith hit me harder than that. Carl Frotch hit me harder than that. Right? So let's say Canelo loses to Rocky Fielding. Let's say Canelo says to himself, I don't even want a rematch here. I don't care what's in the contract. I've lost. I'm going to go back down to middleweight. Right? Let's say he says that. How do you know? that he doesn't get destroyed in the third fight by Golovkin. Let's say he doesn't fight Golovkin on his return to middleweight. Let's say he fights someone else. Are you sure that Canelo can beat Danny Jacobs? Are you sure that Canelo can beat Jamal Charlo? Understand he's had a great career. Spectacular. Hall of Fame level. Right? I feel Canelo right now is a future Hall of Famer. But wow, folks, he's won some photo finish fights. Right? Some fights that were too close to mention. Like that last fight. Right? Even if you thought he won that last fight, you were likely in suspense while they were reading the scorecards. Then when you talk with friends, then when you heard the backlash, then when you just looked at the press polling here online, you had to understand that there was another opinion out there. So Canelo now only has one loss. One loss. Right? If you're going to be paying him 30 odd million dollars to fight, you're going to expect him to fight A level opposition. Right? A level opposition. If he loses to Rocky Fielding, what's a safe fight for him? Against A level competition. Right? Let's say he beats Rocky Fielding. Let's say the other champs, this is what happens in sports, right? Let's say the other champs at 168. Callum Smith wants a piece. Gilberto Ramirez wants a piece. Which one of those two guys do you believe he beats? Let's say one of the older men in the division, right? James DeGale, George Groves. Guys who have drawn crowds before because you're going to need eyeballs to justify the money you're paying him. You're going to need known names. Even if there's a younger, hungrier lion out there who might have more skills, who might only need an opportunity to devour these better known older lions, you're going to want to see Canelo against guys you know. Right? Which one of those guys do you think he beats? Let me say this too, 168 is going to get even more crowded, right? We're, ne we're now finding out that Saunders has been stripped of his middleweight title. The drug he took was also one of these drugs that helps you lose weight, right? It's supposed to be even more powerful than clenbuterol. So I believe it's a foregone conclusion that Saunders ends up fighting at 168 pounds. Right now, Saunders has skills. Like Gilberto Ramirez, Saunders can operate for 12 rounds on his back foot behind a jab. Right? Does Canelo have the foot speed? 
to get inside. I'm Billy Joe Saunders. Let's talk about another guy who has to be chopping at the bit. Chris Eubank. Right? Now understand, with Eubank you don't have a big margin for error. Right? Yul Durham found out that Eubank's a guy who actually wants to trade. Saunders himself found out that Eubank's a guy who is going to bring it even when you're winning round after round. Saunders faded in the second half of that Eubank fight. Now, if I'm paying Canelo big money, I'm going to want him to fight a Chris Eubank. Are you certain that Chris Eubank, who on the inside throws one of the sport's best uppercuts, in my opinion, are you confident that Canelo beats Chris Eubank? Understand, Eubank might struggle with a highly skilled George Groves, another man who is legitimately 168 pounds, right? Who's roughly Eubank's size. Does he struggle with a smaller guy who might be taking parts of rounds off? Right? So, I understand the world we live in has Canelo as the number two ranked pound for pound, according to Box Rack, and has Gilberto Ramirez, <laughs> a guy who's been a champ for over a year in Canelo's current division, ranked at number 26. I know in the world we live in, Canelo, who's never fought at 168 before, never, is somehow a huge favorite against the reigning super middleweight champion in Rocky Fielding who's only lost once and that's to a guy who also holds a part of the title right now right but if we get off this PR caught up in the moment type of sentiment right what exactly is Canelo's future at 168 if it gets bumpy, if he finds out, and he wouldn't be the first fighter to find this out, that the weight class is too big for him, right? If he goes back to middleweight, what's his future there? Right? Demetrius Andre, folks, is very good on his back foot. He's also unbeaten. He's at middleweight. Now, I'm a DAZN subscriber. If they're hyping a Canelo fight, it better be against big names. You know, Callum Smith, okay, I'll take that. You know, um, Rocky Fielding, hey, I look forward to that fight, especially since I have some money on Rocky. Right? Some of these other guys, you know, James DeGale, everyone here knows I'm a big James DeGale fan. I'll go with that. George Groves, hey, I'll go with that. At middleweight, Golovkin, that's that's his big rival. Right? Demetrius Andre, hey, I'm game for that. Right? Billy Joe Saunders, I'll, I'll pretend he's still a middleweight. I'm guessing his next fight's at 168. But Billy Joe Saunders, I'll go with that. What the zone can't do is try to convince me that Canelo against some unknown fighter is worthy of the money they're paying him. And I'm just telling you, Canelo's at a dangerous point in his career now where he's surrounded by guys who want to take a swing at the king. Right? So... I'll be surprised, and I know the press is throwing around the word guaranteed, but I've learned watching the NFL, for example, that that word doesn't mean as much as you think it does. I'll be surprised if Canelo is able to have three or four big fights under this deal where he continues his current winning streak. I think he's in the shark-infested part of the beach, 
right? I think some of the guys out there are going to make him look small. Other guys are going to welcome him on the inside and then take him apart. I privately don't know how he beats Danny Jacobs at 160. Now I know many people here online feel I'm a Canelo hater. Okay, fine. I'll take the criticism. You can leave it in the comment section of this video, right? But let's just say Canelo's been fighting big names. He's held his own. There's no question about it, right? But let's just say the scoring in Canelo fights, some of them could have gone the other way, right? There's several such fights, both of the Golovkin fights, the Eris Lari, <coughs> excuse me, the Eris Landi Lara fight, the Austin Trout fight, right? Many of those fights could have gone the other way. He has one loss. He has a big name. I'm just telling you, if Rocky Fielding destroys him, it might be some time before he gets back in the ring. Think about what happened to Tyrone Zyge, the guy Rocky Fielding just destroyed. In Tyrone's backyard. Right? You know the way boxing is. A fighter ends up in a car crash. Like most of us, he needs time to recover from that car crash. He needs to build his confidence back up. He's not going to run back into a burning kitchen. Right? So, as a DAZN subscriber, wow. I can't wait to see Canelo. He's certainly one of the most exciting guys in boxing. He certainly has fought tough competition time and time again in the sport. And he certainly held his own. And he's certainly, in my opinion, one of the hardest punchers in the sport pound for pound. But he's going to lose some of these fights, folks. I, I don't see this as a victory lap. I see this as a middleweight. Now trying to ply his trade at 168 pounds. And having problems. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Let me congratulate Canelo for getting the deal. More fighters need to think about deals like this. I just think to earn the money, he's going to have to fight some guys who may just be a bit too much in his new weight class. That's how I see it. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.